Well, the housing picture looks either grim or great, depending on whether you're trying to sell your home or buy one. Prices continue to slide. And they're now at levels not seen since late 2003. Bad for sellers, good for buyers. But now we're really going to look at the buying opportunities and how to lock in those great rates and those great opportunities. Here's Danny Babb, author of The Accidental Landlord. All right, Danny, you've got some great information on where to shop and how to look. But this is really an unprecedented opportunity here, right? Oh my God, it's amazing. We have rates under 5% for most 4 banks. 4.61. And, and it's not even that difficult to qualify for those. You can put 3% down. What's happening is the, the banks are lending like crazy on loans that the government is willing to buy, which is anything above 417,000 or 749,000, depending upon where you live. Okay, so uh, let's talk about your lists here because mm -hmm. I think they're critical. You have a list of where to buy. Mm -hmm. Places that are good, that are cheap, yep. where you can actually purchase, say, a second home or a vacation home. Yeah, and it depends on how you want to proceed in the future. So do you want to be stable or do you want to make a, a potentially make a lot of money? Let's talk about vacation homes okay, here. So, so we're really looking at markets mm -hmm. where people typically buy second homes mm -hmm. and we've seen huge price cuts in places yeah. like Miami, for in example. Miami, South Florida, Las Vegas, Arizona, South Southern California, even Northern California, the Sunbelt states and places where boomers are moving in, where hopefully you're not going to lose much going forward, which is really important. And those prices are down 40%. They are. 40, 50, 60% sometimes in South Florida. And if you can get a foreclosure on top of that, you can take another 10 to 20% off of that price. The time to buy is amazing. If you're a first-time home buyer, you're going to get that $8,000 credit if you hold it for three years. Another huge incentive. Lots well, of great deals. Given the fact that you brought up first-time home buyers, mm -hmm. let's talk about places for stability then, because yeah. those folks are looking at different <laughs> markets. Yeah, you don't want to jump into your first home and see it drop 20% in three years. <laughs> you might you might not be a little, you know, be used to that. So first of all, we know that in Idaho, people are moving from Colorado to Idaho. Now, the, the reason for that move is not quite clear yet, but we do know that's happening. So Idaho is pretty stable. Texas has not lost in almost all counties anything over the last several years. In fact, it's actually been bumped up. So we have Kylene, Austin, Round Rock, uh, most of the Dallas suburbs are doing really well. And then we also have places where green energy is moving in, Northern California, Oregon, Washington doing very well. And then we have some places outside of Richmond, Virginia that are doing very well. All right, steering clear. You have a mm -hmm. list of places you say, mm -mm, don't <laughs> buy there. One of them is Fort Myers, Florida. Yeah. I thought Florida was on sale. Why wouldn't I buy it? It is. It's a fire sale in Florida. But there's some concerns about Fort Myers because a lot of it is military driven and the people are getting moved around so frequently. A lot of them are getting in, going into foreclosure, which is a problem. Very high foreclosure rate. We have also seen over the last three quarters prices drop off more than the rest of the state, which is a concern. Riverside, San Marino County, California, stay away from it. People can move into urban areas for cheaper prices and be close to work. So that's another reason you don't want to be there. Our, and of course, we talked about Detroit. We're talking about Buffalo Absolutely. because these are places with economic problems that aren't right. getting solved quickly. You could really find yourself in a yeah. bad situation. Let's talk about negotiating now mm -hmm. because it's an entirely different scenario. <laughs> if you are a buyer, Absolutely. what can I get? What can I push for? Well, first of all, you should always push to have your closing costs covered by the seller. Now, it's going to depend highly on how uh, how much that per, how many other people want that house that you're looking at buying and how badly you want it. If you've got a lot of people in there, you might not want to push too hard. But in general, closing costs paid for by the seller. Closing uh, costs. Closing this is costs. Thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars, but it's and it generally the the buyer would pay for that. But right. in this market, we are seeing it split or the seller paid. Have uh, the seller consider buying down your rate using points. So it might cost you one, two thousand dollars to get a better rate. Have the seller consider buying that down. We used to split title and escrow 50-50. Have the seller not pay. Anymore. Have the seller not pay anymore. Not anymore. Hey, yeah. you know, I've got a great idea. What if I go into that mm -hmm. house and the kitchen is old fashioned, yep. looks like hell? Can I get them to another, pony up a little dough? Another great idea. Asking for cash back at close and to, to do some remodeling and also asking the realtor that's representing that particular home to maybe throw some cash back your way at the end of close as well for you and for the seller. I love that idea. Which is an option. Danny, great mm -hmm. ideas. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I hope you're TiVoing this show because you have to keep up and it can't be hard, but great information today on that. The bottom line here though, as a buyer, you have leverage in this market and everything is negotiable. Ask your seller for closing costs, any points on the loan. Look, you can even ask for money to remodel like maybe a portion of the cost for your brand new kitchen. Buyers have the power.